For today's project, you are going to need a number six chunky yarn, and I am using Softy Chunky by Bernat, and the color I am using is sea green. And each ball of yarn has 108 yards. You will need two balls of the Bernat Softy Chunky yarn. And if you are not using the Bernat Softy Chunky, you will need at least 216 yards of yarn. You will also need some scissors to cut off the odds and ends. For today's hook, we will be using a K10 and a half, 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. To begin, I am going to be starting with a slip knot. To do a slip knot, simply take a couple of inches around your finger, taking the yarn, wrapping it around your index finger, and you are going to hold the back yarn and the front yarn. Then you are going to take the back yarn and push it through the hole just like that. Pull that up and then taking the end of the yarn, I like to take both yarns and pull that through and you have a slip knot. We're going to put our hook through that slip knot and pull our working yarn. With medium tension you want to chain 13. To chain simply take your hook yarn over and pull through the loop that's one yarn over again and pull through that's two yarn over pull through again and that's three you then want to continue to repeat this process a total of 13 times so we have chained a total of 13 times we will begin to work our row one and this is called the foundation chain which means this is what's going to make your work. So now that we are working in rows, we are going to put one double crochet into the very third chain. The loop on the hook that we have right here doesn't count as anything. So you want to yarn over and count one, two, and three. Yarn over, taking your hook and putting that into the chain and you're going to pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of those chains. We'll then yarn over, then pull through these next two chains. And you now have a double crochet yarn over and go into the very next chain putting another double crochet okay you're going to pull up a loop with three chains on your hook yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two I'm going to repeat this process one more time to show you how to do this you're going to go into the chain okay and then yarn over and then pull through pulling up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two we have a total of four double crochets because these two chains right here count we want to continue to put one double crochet across and have a total of 12 in the end when you get to the end, you will have a total of 12 double crochets. Let's count together to make sure that we have the correct count. This chain 2 right here counts as a stitch, so we will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we have 12 double crochets across. For row two, you are going to chain up three. There's one, two, and three. Turn your work. After skipping this chain three, you want to go into this next stitch 
but instead we will be working in the back loop only. To determine where the back loop is in every stitch, when you go through one, you're going through two. But when, you, when somebody says to work into the back loop or the front loop, what they're talking about is if you turn your work to the side, there is a front stitch that's right here and the back loop is right here in the back. So we will go into the next chain, okay? We will skip this stitch and work into this stitch working in the back loop and put a double crochet. And we want to put one double crochet across. I just wanted to mention for those who are beginners, it may be tricky to see these stitches. So if you are a beginner, pay attention and let me show you how to determine where the stitches are when you come to the end of row two. So you will have what looks like this and you're probably wondering, this is the very last stitch you're probably thinking. And we have 10 double crochets here. Now you know there's two stitches missing. So to determine where that is, you can kind of turn your work and see where the next double crochet is. So we have a double crochet here, so obviously we have to go into the next stitch. Okay, so we go into the back loop of that one. And sometimes the mistake people make is they accidentally decrease by not going into the next stitch because they've missed a stitch. Again, turn your work and look. When we started the foundation chain, we skipped two chains. This top chain is the chain that you're going to want to work into because this counts as a stitch. So, turn your work and work at the top of that chain. This is the back, and sometimes it may be hard to get into, but you want to work into there. And there we have 12 double crochets in the back loop. We want to continue working from row 2 all the way until row 20. I'm going to continue my part off camera and I will be back as soon as I come to the end of row 20. Ending on row 20, which is right here, you should end on the wrong side, meaning that the tail will be to the right and not to the left, which is, this is the cleaner and the nicer side that will be shown, and this is the side that is like less attractive, is how I like to refer to it. So your work should measure 16 inches evenly. And if you need to make this bigger, like let's say you want to make this for a medium sized dog, maybe you want to make it for a large sized dog, all you have to do is take your measuring tape, continue working these rows, take a measuring tape and make as many rows of double crochet until let's say your dog has a 25 inch neck. Keep working these rows until you reach the 25 inch mark or maybe 26 for a little bit more extra room. So literally that's all you have to do is just continue working rows. Okay, it's that simple. We are going to go ahead and connect this together to start working in the rounds. Placing your hook back into your work, you are going to take both sides and you are going to join them together. To do this, you want to determine where the stitch is, the very first stitch on the other side. Okay, so it's right here, which is on top because the chain two counted. So go into the first chain right here, and you are going to slip stitch to join. Okay, you will then chain one and then you will slip stitch these guys together go back into the same chain and slip stitch okay just like that and kind of just pull it a little tight 
By the way, if you guys can hear any snoring in the background, it's Hazel. He's asleep. <laughs> so holding your work together, like so, you are going to go back into the same stitch and both stitches and you are going to slip stitch that guy together and you will repeat this a total of 12 times. And there that is. Your work is closed up and we are now working in the rounds. Okay? So, we want to then chain one and put one single crochet into the top of the chain right here. So there's a, a chain three immediately to your left side and you are going to put a single crochet into there. So I am going to evenly crochet a total of 32 around and there's no exact place you want to put them. I just kind of put them as I went. So um, crochet evenly 32 and I will be back. Okay so I've come to the end and I have slip stitched to the very first single crochet. So around you should have a total of 32 if you are making this for a small dog. Okay, so my last stitch was right here, the very stitch before you slip stitch. Okay, so we are going to begin working in rounds. So for round one, we are going to chain three. One, two, and three. After you have chained three, we are going to put one double crochet all the way around and the chain three counts as a stitch. So even if you're making this for a bigger dog, all you have to do is just put one double crochet after putting the double amount around of the neck that you had put. And so we are going for a total of 32. So skip that stitch and into the very next stitch you are going to put a double crochet, which is right there. So there's two double crochets already, like because the chain three counts. And we're just going to continue to put one double crochet all the way around. Now that we have slip stitched to the top of the chain three, we are now moving on to round two and you want to begin this round by chaining three again this always counts as our first double crochet and we are just going to repeat this round by putting one double crochet all the way around so continue to work one double crochet all the way around for round two and I will be back as soon as I get done okay so I just wanted to clarify that I have been saying the wrong rounds. So this is round one where we have chained one and single crocheted into every chain making 32 stitches. This is round two and round three. Okay, so I just had to clarify that. I just noticed that I was um, saying the wrong rounds. So just to clarify again. This is round one, two, and three. So we are now moving on to round four. I'm sorry about that, guys. So we are now going to be moving on to round four, and we are going to be increasing. So we are going to chain up three, as usual. And we are going to put one double crochet into the next two stitches for a total of three double crochets. There's one and two, and then the next stitch will be our third stitch. Okay, into that fourth stitch, we are going to increase by putting two double crochets into that same stitch. Okay, 
we will put one double crochet into the next three stitches one then two and then three we will then again increase by putting two double crochets into the same stitch one and two okay so we're going to go ahead and continue this all the way around and i will be back as soon as i come to the end when you come to the end you will have a total of 40 and you will end with an increase i just wanted to note if you were making this for a bigger dog you would just work as many rows depending on the length of their neck and you can determine this by put trying it on your dog now if your dog has a really long neck you're just going to continue to work one double crochet and as soon as the chest meets and it starts getting wide that is where you'll increase and you can use these numbers or you can increase as much as you want the less increases the more that it's not going to really budge it's not going to really open up now the more you do increase the more it's going to open up and you're going to have lots of room for um, the armholes and also for the chest so keep that in mind and just try it on your pet as you go we are now moving on to round five. One, two, three, four, five. So we are going to chain three and we are going to put one double crochet all the way around just to even out our work. So continue to put one double crochet all the way around and you should have a total of 40 when you come to the end. one two and three now we are going to put one double crochet into the next two stitches and we will be creating the armholes this round so there's two double crochets because the chain three and then what we want to do is go into the next stitch and put a double crochet after we have put one double crochet into these first three stitches we will chain up seven one two three four five six and seven now we will skip five stitches so we will go one two three four five and into the sixth stitch we will join with a double crochet so let's go over that really quick so right here let's go ahead and zoom in we want to miss five stitches not including this stitch so that's one two three four and five and we will join to that sixth stitch okay and there is our armhole after we have double crochet to join you want to put one double crochet into the next 23 stitches Okay, so I've come to the 24th stitch and we are going to chain up seven again. And we are going to skip five again and join to the sixth stitch. And then we will put one double crochet into these very last two stitches okay let me just show you what that looks like so we have one two three four five that have been unworked we join to the sixth stitch okay and this is what our work looks like we're going to work one double crochet all the way around. Now if you guys have made my sweaters before, you guys already know how this process works. But if you are a first time viewer of mine, I'm going to show you how to do this. So what I do is I put one double crochet into these stitches, obviously. Put one double crochet. One, two, and three. 
and that chain three counts as a double crochet so that's why I counted that we have this chain bridge is how I refer to it and to get over the bridge we have to crochet over that so we are going to put one double crochet in each individual stitch and we are basically putting what we took out because we missed five stitches so we're gonna put that back into the sweater so starting right here where these little V's are we're gonna put one double crochet sometimes it's a little hard to get into there there's one and two then three then four five and then six and seven you don't want to have no more than seven so if you are making this for a bigger size pet you definitely want to make the chain a little bit more suitable for their size my best advice to give you guys if you guys are making this for a larger size pet is to make a chain that you think would fit your pet and try it on so I am going to continue to work one double crochet all the way around you will repeat what we did here in the beginning on the other side I am going to continue to work this round like so and I will be back as soon as I get done okay so we are going to continue to work round 7 all the way until round 13 by repeating a chain 3 and put one double crochet all the way around and we want to clip off our ends I kinda leave a little long tail so then that way when you single crochet around you can um, tuck in those ends you don't want to do it like too short because then it, you're, it's going to stick out of your sweater. You don't want that to happen. So now we are going to take some stitch markers and place our stitch markers where we want them. And I did want to mention really quick that if you are making this for a bigger size pet, you do want to continue working these rows of double crochet until their, their belly is covered. But you don't want to put too many rows, if especially if, like if you have a male dog because then you don't want them to soil their sweater so with that said I'm going to show you guys a quick trick on how to determine where you are going to put your stitch markers and how to get the correct um, coverage for each side so it's even so what I like to do is take my work and what I do is I kind of just turn it on its side and you want to match up both armholes okay make sure it's even completely after that have it on its side and then you want to line up the last double crochet that you have right here so for instance I'm on my right side so I would match up this double crochet so it's right there 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 and right there so I would put my marker right there because that lines up with right here kind of goes at an angle because you know you're double crocheting we um, have 44 double crochets all the way around we started with 32 then we had 40 and then we have 44 so that's why that kind of does that now what you can do is line these bad boys up so just make sure that it's lined up whatever meets this side right here is where you want to put it so this meets this side okay see and that's how you determine on how to make the back sides for a dog sweater so then you can just kinda of turn it on its back make sure that they both are even and if they don't look even like how this looks all you have to do is chain change where you put it so it's uneven by one stitch and I can tell because this lands on the side and this lands more down here and you want them to kind of land at the same exact side so that's how you determine that and we are going to join our yarn so 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve stitches from the chain three. So when you count, do not count this chain three. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So with our work upside down, we want to join our new yarn to where this first stitch marker is. To join your yarn, I like to just pull it through the stitch and tie a little knot. And sometimes I like to tie it really tight. Don't do it too tight where you rip off the yarn, but I like to do it twice. And what you want to do is put your hook back inside of the same stitch where you joined and chain up three. Then you will put one double crochet all the way across until you reach the other side where your other stitch marker is. Remember when you halved it and you uh, place that stitch marker, that's where you will double crochet. And uh, you will put a double crochet into the stitch marker because that's telling you that is going to be your very last stitch. After you have double crocheted 24 double crochets across, you are going to work row number two and you are going to chain three one, two, and three, and then you are going to turn your work, now working in rows, and the chain three counts as a double crochet as always, so you want to skip that stitch, and into the second stitch, you are going to put a double crochet. I'm going to continue to work one double crochet across this row and when you come to the end there will be a chain three because that's where we joined our yarn and you will just put one double crochet into the top of the chain three and then chain three and then turn your work again and then work across. We are doing this for a total of five times. So now I am on row two. I will repeat this three more times. I will be back as soon as I get to the end of row five. Okay, you guys, so this is what our work is looking like so far. I have came to the end of row five. And now we are going to start single crocheting around the sweater. So what I'm going to do is work into there, and of course, if you can, try to get both stitches, not one. There we go. I got both loops, and I went into there. I have come to the end of working around with the single crochets immediately slip stitch to the first single crochet there and then what we want to do is chain one and finish off. So we are going to be working on the armholes. I am turning my work upside down where the neck cuff is and you can use your favorite joining method as I like to draw mine through the corner stitch right here. And I am going to make a knot. I am going to put my hook inside the same stitch where I joined my yarn. And we are going to chain three. One, two, and three. Our first chain three counts as a double crochet. So we do nothing in there and we want to put one double crochet all the way around. Mine has a total of 17 double crochets all the way around.
and sometimes you have to turn your work because we have to work upside down so here I have one two three four five six There's seven, working upside down. There's eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, and there is the 17th stitch. You will then join to the top of the chain 3, our very first stitch. And that's what our work looks like. Now what you could do is do another round of double crochet and then single crochet in the third round if you want a short sleeve. But if you want a long sleeve, you can follow my tutorial. Um, if you are making this for a larger size dog, you do want to continue working these rows until you get the uh, perfect amount for their legs. And you can determine this by, again, trying this on your pet. So I'm going to work up to row, actually round four, of just chain three and double crochet. So one, two, and three. We are now on round two. And we are going to continue to work up one double crochet around, and we're gonna repeat this round until we get to the end of round four. After you have slip stitched to the top of the chain three, after round four, you are just going to single crochet into the same stitch as the chain one. And then you want to put one single crochet all the way around. It's a very simple round, just single crochet. Okay, so I have come to the end and we are going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. Okay, so we are on round six and we are going to decrease and we are going to chain one. Immediately, we are going to decrease. So go in there, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all those. Single crochet into the next stitch. And then after that, into the next two stitches, you are going to single crochet together, and then single crochet, and then single crochet two together, and then single crochet, whoops, I'm moving ahead of myself, then single crochet, and then you are going to single crochet two together, and then single crochet, and then I'm kind of like working my way around here. <laughs> single crochet two together. And then you will have one stitch left. Actually, no, you won't. And then single crochet. And then you don't have anything left. You have a single crochet, so just go in there for a single crochet. And then you are going to slip stitch that together 
chain one and then finish off. So if you are making this for a larger size pet, you can decrease as much as you want. You can do a little bit more than I did or you can do it like how I did it. So I am going to clip off my yarn here and I'm going to weave in my ends and then I'm going to complete the other side which I haven't done yet off camera. And as soon as we get done with that, the sweater is complete and I will show you guys how it looks. So this is what the little arm sleeve looks like. Super cute, huh, you guys? Oh, that little hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the final result for Hazel's sweater. And Hazel is wearing it right now. He's wearing this adorable long sleeve dog sweater. It's really thick. My poor Hazel. He's so cold. But not with this sweater, huh? The sweater has made life so much better and so warm, huh? It's weird. He doesn't like to sleep with the blankets. I know. I put I bundle him up with a bunch of blankets. But he seems to not want to keep them on. So I make him dog sweaters. So Hazel finally sat up for us. So I could show you guys quickly what the sweater looks like. This is what it looks like from behind. And this is what it looks like from the front. And it... Let's see. His paws are right here. And you can close this in more if you guys want. This is what it looks like. It's so cute. I love it. What about you, Hazel? Do you like your doggy sweater? Do you like that? I'm going to tell everybody on YouTube, try my sweater. It's cozy. It's warm. And he's falling asleep on us on camera. Yeah, but you guys definitely have to try the sweater. Love... Hazel and Marky. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.